Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for a very exciting video, one I've been wanting to make forever, a look behind the curtains of the most exciting part of the Razor Emporium workshop, the electroplating department. A lot of people don't know this, but we have literally an entire laboratory set up in our workshop that does nothing but run old vintage razors through it to put a brand new lease on life to refinish your razor so it can look brand new once again like it walked off the factory floor or in some cases even better than it walked off the factory floor. It's something very unique to Razor Emporium. It's something I'm very proud of. It took a lot of work and a lot of effort to get to the point that you see today uh, with you know the setup we have. There are many iterations along the way and, and a lot of growing pains and a lot of you know milestones and, and steps to get to where we are but it's something that really differentiates us from anyone else out there. You know, a lot of people know Razor Emporium from these videos we do, from our retail section of, you know, selling Parasso and selling, you know, shaving cream and brushes and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, the restoration service kind of was the impetus of Razor Emporium. When we first started, you know, buying and selling vintage razors, I got so disheartened by the fact that some of these razors looked so beautiful and so good, but other ones beat up, neglected, or left in, in some kind of chemical cesspool or something and the finish had just been destroyed. Maybe there's rust inside of it, maybe there was soap residue, maybe someone used the wrong cleaning products, the wrong metal finishes, and they destroyed the finish. And if only we could put a new coating on it, if only we could, you know, kind of rehab it or revamp it, it would be great again, it'd be beautiful again, it'd look, you know, just like it did in the 1950s and it would function the same way. So let's talk about how we get there. The very first step before it comes to the plating room is actually all the prep. And we're not gonna go too deep into this. We have other videos showing some of the prep steps. You can check out the Impossible Revamp video, other videos we've done showing a lot of the preparation steps. But I can tell you that it's not as simple as just taking in our plating room and dipping it in a gold tank or something that's full of liquid gold and, and, and it's done now. So we're gonna resurface the razor, right? So we're gonna uh, take off the original finish, disassemble it, you know, get all the way down to the brass. We're gonna polish it, tumble it, sand it, whatever's needed to bring the best finish out that we can start with because plating is kind of like garbage in, garbage out or perfection in, perfection out. What you get into the plating room is gonna mostly determine what you're gonna get out of the plating room. People think that the shininess from gold comes from the gold itself, no. If we walk into the plating room with a matte finished or satin finished razor, it doesn't matter what plating chemistry we put it through, it will come out the exact same finish. So finish going in is a finish going out. So we generally offer two finishes. Our factory finish is more of a tumbled kind of original factory look. And then we have more of our premium finishes like rhodium and gold that are more shiny, reflective, have these areas that make it really sparkle and bling. So that's all gonna get done in our safety razor polishing area. Our technicians will then rack the parts up onto a, a large kind of metal frame that conducts electricity so we can run power through the parts because they do need to have power run through them to actually deposit the plating correctly. None of this would be possible if we didn't first identify every part with a number and even, even the rack itself has a number. All those numbers of the parts and what rack they're on and where they're at in the process are all notated on the work order sheets that our technicians use to keep track of everything. So if there's ever a question about where the left door is on a 1959 fat boy that belonged to John Doe from Houston, Texas, we can find it. We can go back to our sheet. We can see what rack it's on, what bin it's in, what technician had it last. All that's taken care of. All that's tracked and organized in our shop. So we're going to bring them into our ultrasonic tank. It's the very first step in our laboratory. It's a 40 gallon tank. It's heated to 170 degrees. Inside of it is a really strong detergent. It's like pH 14, like super basic. And this product is exclusively used to remove polishing compounds and any kind of dirt or grime or oils that are left on the part from the resurfacing process and basically get the surface clean and ready for the next step in the process. Next, we're gonna go over to the electroclean tank. So this is another really strong base 
uh, chemistry, pH, again, like 13, 13 and a half, 14. Heat it to 145 degrees. This chemistry kind of preps the part, and now we're gonna use electricity plus a chemical to pull anything left on the surface. So we kind of did it once before with the ultrasonic cleaner, and then we're gonna do it again now with this electro polish cleaner to get the, the surface as clean as possible. Because when we do a plating step, right, you don't wanna have adhesion problems. If we don't have a clean surface to begin with, you can have the next chemistry not even want to adhere and make a nice chemical ionic bond with the, with the surface of the brass, and you're just gonna be sticking to grime, and then you can have uh, delamination or flaking happening where the, the plating just doesn't stick right, right? So you gotta have a nice clean surface. One interesting thing to note about our laboratory is half of the, actually two thirds of the tanks you see in this room are all just rinsing tanks and water tanks meant to kind of chemically stop one process from bleeding into the next, right? So if I have a real strong base as my first step with the ElectroClean, I can't go into an acid and not expect to mix those two unless I have really good rinsing in place. So we have a spray rinse process and then we have a deep water rinse process. All the rinses, all the waters in our system use deionized water, which is uh, essentially H2 and O, nothing else, no other you know, uh, minerals, no other ions attached to it. So the cleanest water possible uh, is going to make sure that our chemistry remains as, as clean and consistent as possible and also make sure we don't get water spots or deposits through our process. You know, because we're working on raw brass, as it's going even through water, if there's, if there's deposits in the water, let's say I'm using tap water instead, those can actually start staining my, my brass before I even get to plating. And I'll finish the plating, I'll want, like say, why is there a dark stain on here? Well, it could have come from dirty water, so we use the cleanest water possible. Next, we go into an acid etching process. So if you've ever refinished like a cabinet or a, you know, a chair or table, you know that you have to sand to kind of give like little microscopic teeth for your stain to want to adhere. And that's exactly the same kind of stuff that's happening here with the acid etch process. It's kind of on a chemical level, making the surface somewhat porous and somewhat rough, just so that the next actual plating process wants to adhere, has something to grab onto. It also kind of brings the metal from a strong base to more of an acid. And the acid level, the pH in here, I think is like three or, or two. So it's pretty strong acid and it really preps the part and, and gets it ready to receive plating. Next, we're gonna go over to our acid copper strike. This is a bath that's chilled to 70 degrees, 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So it definitely has to be run a little bit cooler. And it essentially is going to put a very thin layer of copper onto the brass components. Uh, this is something Gillette did. This is something that most shops will do with brass. Brass itself doesn't want to receive other platings like uh, nickel or gold or rhodium without this first kind of adhesion layer. So the copper is just put on for 20 or 30 seconds, a very thin amount, just to flash it and, and put a deposit so we can, we can kind of continue on and have a highly conductive layer that can help promote a good deposit for our next step. So next we're gonna go into bright nickel plating. This is uh, an acid nickel process, heated to 145 degrees. We have agitation on this bath, so the plating racks are actually moving and kind of swimming in the chemistry. This just promotes more homogeneous adhesion, right? So you're gonna deposit the layer and it's gonna be evenly deposited. This also is a process that uses electricity. So running a power supply that's gonna have, I think right around two volts of power and the amperage kind of changes based off of how many parts are going into it. More or less, the plating process involves charging your parts as a negative and then the plating bath itself becomes positive and the difference between the positive and negative wants to cause the nickel to deposit and kind of be attracted to your parts and it changes states. People always think that, you know, our copper bath is gonna look like a shining penny, like ruby red liquid. No, it's, it's blue, it's copper sulfate, right? It's copper crystals, copper salt. Our nickel is the same way, it's nickel sulfate, so it's green crystals of nickel. And when, it, when we apply this electricity, and we apply this process to happen, it changes state. So it goes from a salt to a solid as it hits your parts. And that's how you get that shiny gray, somewhat white deposit of nickel onto the razor part. And it's not like a coating like paint. It's actually ionically bonding. So the, if you zoomed in and you had like an electronic microscope and you could see the atoms, the atoms of the, of the copper and the atoms of the nickel are actually connecting and, and, and bonding together 
uh, and becoming one surface. So it's not like it's a nickel sprinkled on top of the copper. It's actually bonding and making a very, very strong connection. So you can't rub it off. It's not going to flake off. If you do these steps correctly, it actually bonds. So if the razor was sent in for a factory nickel finish, this is going to be the end of the line. We're going to stop right here. Uh, it's going to come out. We're going to spray it off. We're going to dry it off with really super clean air so we don't deposit any oil stains. And uh, this is going to be it. It's going to go back out and get unracked and you know, reassembled and put back together. And we'll check it all out for you guys. But if it's sent in for a premium finish, it's going to continue on. So we're actually going to take it out of this nickel, and if it's going to gold, then it goes over to a gold strike process where we put a very thin amount of gold on just to kind of do an even coating to make sure we have good adhesion and good throwing power of the strike bath, meaning we want to make sure we get the gold into all these little lather holes and all these little nooks and crannies of the part, and the, and the gold strike bath does a great job of that. Then we're gonna come out of the gold strike and go actually into the 24 karat gold. This is a, a product that has a cobalt as a kind of a bimetal hardener, and it's gonna make for a very strong deposit of 24 karat gold, much stronger than what Gillette did. Uh, we also plate at a thicker deposit level, and so it should hold up much longer than the Gillette finishes did. And we also, we don't do a lacquer for this reason. You know, the lacquers may protect in the short run, but as you see with old Gillette razors, the lacquer starts drying up, turns orange, flakes off, and it can actually uh, take away from the finish quality. So we'd rather just do a nice deposit of gold to begin with. But it's in the gold bath for a few minutes. And again, this is a gold salt, right? So it's gonna deposit as gold once it hits the part. If it was sent in for rhodium, it's actually going to switch, and instead of going to gold, it's going to go to our rhodium process. It comes right out of nickel into rhodium. No strike needed. It goes right into rhodium just for a few seconds. The rhodium's just kind of a flash on top of the nickel. Uh, we're going to get most of that color from the nickel being underneath. The rhodium's going to add hardness. It's going to add color, more of a white hue. It's also going to add kind of an anti-corrosion aspect. So rhodium doesn't really react with oxygen in the air. It is kind of a real noble metal, so all of its little ions are tied up, and it doesn't want to bond with anything in the air, so it doesn't tarnish, right? You can't get rhodium oxide. You can get nickel oxide, you can get iron oxide, which is called rust, right? But the rhodium doesn't do that, so it should always remain super clean. If it does look dirty ever or hazy, it's probably just soap scum on it, and you can use a dish detergent to pull that off. Rhodium's a super popular metal. We've been doing it for years. Gillette, they did it on some of their models, like President and some of the British aristocrats, but really rhodium's a pretty uh, high-end metal. It always trades at multiple times the price of gold on the metal market. It's a lot more durable than gold, of course. And it's something really unique to us. Not a lot of people want to do rhodium. It's a, it's a very uh, risky process to do. If you contaminate this bath, it's a very expensive mistake to make. Even the tank we have is, you know, only like two and a half gallons. It's heated to 115 degrees. And it's, I don't want to get into numbers, but let's just say it's over $10,000 for a small bath like this. So it's, it's definitely a bath that... Uh, we, we really protect, we really take care, we make sure there's no contaminations into it. It's also probably the most popular finish we do is the rhodium finish. But yeah, that's, that's the process, right? So if we finish with, with either the gold or the rhodium or nickel, it's all going to get dried off. We want to make sure there's no water spots in the parts. Uh, it's going to go over and get unracked, so we're going to clip all the little parts off and put them back with their paperwork, make sure we keep track of everyone's doors and pieces. And it's going to go to uh, some of my technicians to reassemble. And we're going to put everything back together and in accordance to factory specifications, make sure the blade gaps are correct, butterfly actions open smoothly, any kind of painting or powder coating is all done right now. So if it's a red tip, we'll powder coat that, or black handle, super adjustable, we'll powder coat that. Lubricate everything, give it a once over, make sure everything's good, and it's going to go and get shipped home to you. So that's kind of a... A bird's eye view of the electroplating process. I've wanted to show this, this process for some time. I wanted to show you guys kind of the behind the scenes. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to love watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and he would take you around and show you like how crayons are made and how milk is made. And I've always loved those factory tours, you know, Willy Wonka factory tour of how things are done. And this electroplating process was, uh, was designed with you guys in mind. It's designed so we can take these old vintage razors that 
um, can be made great again and, and will do it. And not a lot of other people want to do this, right? There are some other guys out there that have come and gone over the years. Some guys use little beakers to plate everything. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to dog on them. Anyone who's doing that out there, I commend you. Congrats. You know, keep on going. But I can say that after experience of doing it, the volume makes a huge difference. And if you've ever had an aquarium, you know what I'm talking about. If you have a tiny aquarium and you drop one little drop of oil in there, you can kill everything, right? And if you've got a 100-gallon aquarium and you drop one little drop of oil, eh, everything kind of can balance out and not be so affected. And the same thing is with our electroplating process. We work really hard and we even have a, like a staff chemist that comes through and checks our levels weekly, making sure everything's in you know perfect balance and everything's you know running as it should all of our levels are correct all of our additional chemicals are added in and make sure everything looks really really great the most important thing is consistency and when you have a small setup it's really hard to have consistency you have ups and downs of quality or ups and downs of, of how your chemistry is wearing out and you got to replenish it right you're taking metal out you, you it just can't go out you got to put stuff back in so you're always adding back in for everything you're taking out and with larger tanks and a bigger setup like this, it's easier to keep things in balance. So that's just kind of one note. But uh, we definitely stand behind everything we do. If you have had something plated with us, we always offer a six month warranty. We do that because after six months, it really comes down to how you're gonna take care of it. You know, We wanna make sure that there's no issues. If you got something and there's an issue, we always will take care of our customers. But the best thing you can do to take care of your razor is to periodically clean it with a detergent to take the soap scum off. Take your blade out after use. Make sure it's just dry and clean. You know, clean it with a cotton towel and buff it up with a cotton towel. You don't need fancy metal polishes. Keep it in a cool, dry place. You know, don't leave it in the shower. Like, that's a way to destroy your finish, right? We do include the polishing cloth with you guys for every revamp order or tune-up order. So you can just kind of buff up the surface. If you get, like, a, a fingerprint on it or watermark, you can buff that up. But past that, if it needs more than that, let us know. You know, you can send it back in to us. But we, don't wanna, we wanna make sure you don't destroy the finish you just paid for. I'm happy that you guys get to have these beautiful vintage razors back in functional order, back in circulation. They have a new lease on life. They're gonna be able to last for generations again. Maybe you had grandfather's old razor and you can put a new finish on it and use it for another couple decades, right? You can hand it down to the next generation and keep that razor alive. And that's why we do what we do. So if you have any questions about what we do, if you wanted to see more, if you have a comment about some of our processes, if I haven't thrown enough chemistry at you and you want to tell me about chemistry, tell me in the comments below. And if you do leave a comment, you are entered into win this. The Razor Emporium official black and blue t-shirt. That's all I got, guys. Please share this video, like it if you liked it. Uh, tune in next time to Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.